And I now give the floor to Ambassador Lois Young, Chair of the Alliance of Small Island States and Permanent Representative of Belize to the United Nations to make her statement. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador Frazier. Thank you. yourself and Ambassador Webson, the co-chairs of the steering committee for SIDS on giving me this opportunity to say a few open remarks at this very important meeting. Um, the meeting last year, I enjoyed it very much. Of course, I was chairing, but I think I'll enjoy this one too, looking at the agenda. Um, genuine and durable partnerships are the linchpin of the Samoa pathway which was adopted in 2014. And they serve as the sustainable development blueprint, or rather the Samoa pathway serves as a sustainable development blueprint for SIDS. Since then, some progress has been made in advancing, expanding, and generating new partnerships targeted towards SIDS, which the OHR, LLS, and DESA will further elaborate on, I imagine, during this year. I will focus my comments on the road that lies ahead in light of two important developments that took place since the last global multi-stakeholder dialogue. First, the high-level midterm review of the Samoa pathway that took place on the 27th of September 2019 and adopted the political declaration highlighting progress, gaps, and challenges, as well as priority areas for action. The political declaration was preceded by an extensive preparatory process involving each region of EOSIS and then interregionally and then through very challenging multilateral negotiations. And so the political declaration is an important document which takes stock of how far we have come during the, the first five years of implementation and the direction we need to head, to head uh, over the next five years in order to realize the goals and aspirations of the Samoa Party. It identified where progress is lacking and where the persistent challenges and obstacles lie in implementation. It is an authentic assessment of our situation. Second, not long after the adoption of this declaration in September 2017, the entire world was hit with a crisis of unforeseen magnitude with the outbreak of COVID-19, the pandemic. Since then, our attention and resources have been diverted towards addressing the, criteria, the, the, the uh, crisis at hand and the challenges and obstacles identified in the midterm um, review declaration and these have been further exacerbated. While recognizing these challenges, this is the time to turn this into SID's advantage. We must decide the types of partnerships that we need to forge and strengthen, not only to recover from the global crisis, but realize our long-term development targets and plan commitments. And I wish, if I may, to highlight a few of the key action areas from the Samoa Party in this context. It is evident, firstly, that healthcare systems in SIDS need to be strengthened to be better prepared for the ongoing as well as future health crises. We lack the capacity to deal with large scale pandemics and the obstacles to ac accessing and securing supply chains have ma made this more pronounced. With high res reliance on food imports, coupled with the loss in revenue, disruptions to food supply chains, and diminished purchasing power due to the unprecedented increase in unemployment, populations in SIDS are at severe risk of food insecurity. Additionally, we also need to tackle nutritional dimensions of this crisis. Thirdly, Many SIDS lack adequate social protection systems due to constraints in fiscal space and capacity. By this, I mean that government assistance can only be meager, rudimentary, and mostly inadequate. The social and societal damage resulting from this pandemic will persist well beyond the recovery without an urgent response 
to provide social safety nets. Fourthly, SIDS have narrow economies with industries such as tourism accounting for most of the GDP. The cessation of these industries due to COVID-19 has exacerbated the fiscal imbalances in many SIDS and reduced the flow of foreign direct investment. There is an urgent need to diversify the economies through expanding new and innovative industries such as perhaps ocean-based economies. Fifthly, the global economic slowdown has exacerbated existing debt service burdens and resulted in an unprecedented liquidity crisis in SIDS with increased, increased risks of defaults on external debt. Immediate and effective commitments for long-term debt relief is required from our creditors, our creditors. So while these challenges persist, resources are diverted and repurposed both nationally and internationally for the immediate response and recovery from the pandemic. While this may be necessary in the short term, how can a government ensure that this does not compromise the resources that have been committed for the implementation of the Samoa pathway? Complementary approaches must, must be explored to ensure that both issues are addressed simultaneously. For instance, incentives and stimulus packages being considered for economic recovery from COVID-19 should be designed in a manner that also advances our sustainable development goals. We cannot afford to sacrifice these long-term goals for our short-term gains. The main challenge for SIDS currently is the lack of resources for operationalizing these initiatives and limited capacity to assess and realign policies and targets to address all our challenges in a holistic manner within our limited fiscal space. Avenues to address these resources and capacity challenges must be explored jointly with partners. And this platform serves as the ideal starting point to foster genuine dialogue and make complementary connections. I have full confidence that this steering committee, being ably led by Ambassador Webster and Ambassador Perlipia, supported by DESA and OHR LMS, will play an instrumental role in advancing the Samoa path while also recovering from the far-reaching impacts of the present crisis. I put my faith in you. Thank you.